The birds are chirping. Look at that. The snow is melting. A little pile there. A little pile over there. It's like going up to, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees today. The sun's shining. Spring actually feels like it's here. And even though I know we're going to get a taste or two more of winter, the fact that we get a spring day like this every once in a while is kind of a nice addition. So we are going to take full advantage of that. We are going to do maybe start our spring cleaning jobs today. Kind of things we like, you know, getting some of the dust out of the barn, opening up some of the fans. Just, yeah, you can't help but want to do some spring jobs when it feels so much like spring. That's going to be up a little later. First, though, we are going to continue our barn tours. Last time we were taking a look at the red robots. This time we're going to take a closer look at the green robots, the Gia robots, as we sit back and try to figure out what kind of robot do we end up with. here looking at the robot can you give me an idea maybe maybe start with the basics how is this going to get milk into the tank so the process we start with is our time of flight camera per quarter we look for the quarters and remap the udder and basically we attach we force strip stimmy pulse and clean the teeth all at the same time go to milk flow per quarter and we base that milk flow on the UV sensor and conductivity to base it off of, are we going to dump that four strip milk with good quality milk on our UV sensor, and then we switch to good milk to the tank. So it's kind of deciding, oh, this is, this is, oh, this is too early, too early. No, now we've got good milk. Exactly. Now it's we can literally put it in. a split second when it decides to see good milk to go to the tank. Isn't that amazing? So then let's go back to when it's first hooking up because this this is kind of unique is that you know, it, it's basically hooking up that cup once and doing everything out of that cup. Yeah, so we use our camera once for attaching and basically we cannot milk a tea without cleaning it first. Mm -hmm. And we cannot, basically we always post up our quarters after they are milked because it is always attached. And one time we do not use separate cups, it's four cups for four quarters. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So now we've got this open here. Um, can you, there's a lot of wires and yeah. a lot of pipes and tubes and all that. Yeah. Give me an idea where this is going from which spot. So this is our bad milk receiver or calf milk receiver. And this is where all our four strip milk goes and for and cleaning water. Between milking and dumping, we switch from that and dump it down the drain. And then our calf milk milk can go in there as well. And colostrum milk too. Oh, so I could sort from a calf obviously. Yeah. And Exactly. Keep it here, um, or send it to the, the, at least a bucket, and then... Yep. Oh, that's pretty Yeah, so we start there, and then as soon as we consider our milk good, of our UV sensor, go right to good milk, start filling this, and we have a float on here. As soon as we get full, I think it'll hold about uh, 21 liters in here. Fill up, and then go to the good milk, to the tank. Pretty slick. And we have our decision valves here. Um, which basically determine whether we're going to go to the drain, calf milk, or to the tank. So they're all deciding. But what happens if, like, they're a sensor, they must fail every once in a while. What happens if, will they ever get mixed up? If they get mixed up, it's a fail safe and fails right to drain. We have no contamination of our milk going to the tank or vice versa. Pretty slick. Yeah. Now, I want to look at that box behind you there, the yeah. screen. Um, cause it's, it's kind of a neat one too, in terms of what, what we're able to see. So here we can see, you'll see better when a cow is in there. Um, we can see how much feed she's getting of our two feed types, either fresh cow pellet or regular feed. We can pause feeding, we can sort, we can start a cleaning from here as well. We can do our, uh, indexing of our box, small, medium, and large. Um, we can turn the light on, nice accessory. <laughs> Just to be able to see. Yeah. And here when a cow is in there, it'll give you her expected yield of milk and how much milk she's giving per grams per minute. So it's basically kind of that, that control center and that view for you to be able to exactly. see exactly. exactly what's going on with yep. not just the robot, but obviously with the cow. Exactly. Too. And up here it gives you your operating uh, vacuum for the system and T-Den vacuum. 
and our air pressure for the system for controlling all our valves. So just, um, you know, kind of lastly while we're at least here is what kind of information are we pulling from this robot? Like what, what kind of information can I get in terms of, you know, obviously how much she milks, but what else? So we really rely on performance. So we do milkings per day, uh, days in milk, what the quality of milk is for conductivity wise, milk per quarter, milk speed per quarter, and milk flow on our milk meter as well. And, and I'm guessing that then if anything's up, if anything's wrong, I'll get a notice. Yeah, exactly. So if we say we flag one quarter of high conductivity or it reaches a th certain threshold we set, it'll automatically alarm you to the phone and dump that quarter if we want it to dump. Yeah, yeah. So we can go to the drain or our bucket milk or MS1. As you can see, we got one fan going, but you can also see like the dust really collects in here. And part of that is the fact that like basically between the straw and the feed and the cows and all that kind of stuff, it, it just, it, it can be dusty at times. And all the airflow is designed to move towards the fans and out of the barn. So naturally around where that air is moving it, it just gets dustier it gets dirty and all that kind of stuff so what we're gonna do is grab the power washer we're gonna wash up that back wall that there is another fan we'll wash up the cover and then get um get some wash in there because the other thing we want to do is i mean a job like power washing sure it, it would be nice to do other times but we really need a lot of airflow through the barn to make sure that that moisture, all those water droplets, all that kind of stuff don't hang in the air. Because if they hang in the air for, you know, a, a day or two, the humidity goes up and then we might start running into like respiratory problems on some of these, especially some of the young ones here. So we definitely don't want to do that. So we're basically doing that because it is warm, the sun's shining, the air's dry, and we can open these up. We know the fans will run and it's gonna dry it out. So. Let's get to work.
foggy. You're talking about when I said earlier about that moisture in the air, that humidity, you can just see the steam coming off of it. <clears throat> anyway, we'll fire this fan back up. We've got a long way to go, but we got a good little bit started. Unfortunately, it's milking time, so that's going to be power washing for it. Milking time, hope you got a little bit out of the Gia robot. One more robot to go, and then we'll decide what we're going to put in the barn. Anyway, for next time, we'll see you later.